Hey everyone, it's Lexi. In today's video, I'll be sharing with you the top 10 books that I'd like to read in 2019. So I have a good selection of books here. Some of them are kind of, um, three of them are new releases that will be coming out later this year, which is something that I'm really looking forward to. And then some of them are series that I'd like to kind of, kind of marathon through and just kind of all over the place in terms of genre. So without further ado, let's get started. So starting out with the new releases, I first have The Huntress by Kate Quinn, and this is a World War II novel. Um, I read The Alice Network, which, um, over the summer, which is one of her other kind of World War II books, um, and I loved it. It was probably one of my favorite books of 2018. It was just so impactful for me, and I think I read it at the right time, but I'm really excited for this one. I think it has something to do with, like, Russian spies. I didn't want to know too much about the plot going into this. I just want to go into it blind, but this is something that I'm really excited about. I believe it comes out... February or March. Um, I'm not too sure about that, but I'm really excited for this one. I know it will be really good. If it was anything like the Alice Network, it will be like definitely become one of my all-time favorites. So next we have Ambush by Barbara Nicholas, and this is the third book in the Sydney Rose uh, series, which is a crime series. So it follows a girl named Sydney who is a basically a railroad officer, um, and her sidekick is a dog who was um, belonged to um, a secret agent who passed away in Afghanistan. So she kind of ends up getting stumbled upon murders and she has to solve them and like all that stuff. So it's basically like a crime novel series, but this is the third book and I really am excited for this one. I find her, Sydney, like the books in here are very complex and I like how they deal with PTSD and kind of suffering that because she was overseas. Um, fighting in the war and just kind of her dealing with that. I love the unique relationship between her and her dog. I like how she added that aspect into it, but every book has been so intense. The first one was so good. The second one was really good. So I have like it ended on a really good note for the characters. I'm interested to see how, um, where that leads in the, the third one, but I'm really excited. I don't want to know anything about the plot for this one. I find with crime novels and like historical fiction, I don't like knowing too much about it. I just go into it, but I cannot recommend this series enough. It's really unique and it does deal with some uh, topics that I think need to be discussed in terms of mental health, PTSD, getting uh, Marines and our, um, like, get, getting Marines and people who have fought in war the good, like, treatment to overcome that and just having those resources, so I'm really excited for this one as well. And so this is the last one that will be coming out this year that I'm really excited for, and it is Vow of Thieves by Mary E. Pearson, and this is the second book um, in her new spin-off series that takes place um, in the Remnant Chronicles world. So the first one, basically Dance of Thieves, takes place six years after the events of the Remnant Chronicles after the last book ended and so I love that series. Me and my friend are actually buddy reading it now. Um, I, that's like my favorite YA series of all time so I've been really excited and Dance of Thieves was so good. It ended on su such a cliffhanger um, so I can't wait to see what happens this one and by the time this one comes out me and my friend would be all caught up with uh, the Remnant Chronicles and then this new spin-off series so we'll be all caught up for that one when it comes out which is really exciting and I believe that one comes out in May. Um, I'll have them written down here when they come out. This is just, you know, I'm just guessing at this point, but I cannot recommend this series enough. It's very, the first book, The Kiss of Deception in the Remnant Chronicles is very different from how the series progresses, but it's just really, really good. So I highly recommend you check this series out. You have to start with the Remnant Chronicles before you do the spinoff series, but it's well worth reading all those books to get to here. So next, this is one that I got for my cousin for Christmas that I'm really excited about, and it is Year One by um, Maura Roberts, which is the Chronicles of One book one, and I don't know anything about this, and I know it's a trilogy, and it looks like it has something to do with... I don't even want to know. Like, I didn't know anything about the synopsis, but I've been really into kind of the dark... Like, I've been, I really loved The Chilling Adventures of Sabrina, so I think this one, judging by the title, it looks like it'll kind of have that same feeling, but I've heard really great things about this. I mentioned this in my book haul for the end of 2018, and some of you guys said you really enjoyed this, so I'm excited. I'm looking to starting a new 
kind of fantasy series that's more adult so I think this one will be really intense and just creepy so I'm really excited for this one and I've read the Cousins of Dyer trilogy that she wrote and I really enjoyed it so and my cousin really liked this one as well so I have high expectations for this one. So this is one that I'm really excited about because it is a non-fiction book and it is The Crown, the uh, volume one, the official companion for season one and season two. Um, so it basically talks about what the first two seasons of The Crown, like the events that it talks about in the film or in the TV show and they talk about the differences between the TV show and real life and all that other stuff and just all these people and it's just really interesting like the actual historical people what they changed like the stuff that they had to do behind the scenes and the, like the costumes and all that so I'm really excited I my parents are watching this now I watched this during the end of my master's um, in 2018 so I watched like a marathon through all those so my parents are actually just getting into it now and they really like it so I've been watching it here and there um, but I believe the third season comes out towards the end of 2019 so I this will be a good like, refresher on some of the history and all that behind the crown so this is one that I've actually just started reading today and I'm really liking it so far it's like like lunchtime right now and I read 75 pages so or 80 pages actually and this is one that's been on my list for a while and I actually have just decided to pick it up and it is The Great Alone by Kristen Hanna and this is her newest release this came out last year I want to say and I just never got around to buying it and then in like early January I was like okay I'm just gonna go ahead and do it but this basically follows this girl um whose family is kind of very dysfunctional. Her, her father was a prisoner of war during Vietnam and her mother is just kind of flighty and just kind of goes with the flow. So they end up deciding on a whim to move out to Alaska and that's where the story takes place from there basically. Um, but this one is just, I've heard really great things about it. I heard that it's quite the tearjerker. My aunt read it and she said she really liked it. Um, so I'm happy I'll be able to get this one. Finally, I've been wanting this book for so long so I'm happy. I'm probably gonna fly through this actually. By the time this video's up I'll probably have it read. Um, but like I said, I've been really liking this one so far and I'm a huge Kristen Hanna fan so of course I had to um, include this one in here as well. So this is one I picked up when we were back home in Toronto over Christmas because I had some plum points from Chapters and it is Spinning Silver by Naomi Novik and this is her second, I guess, book following Uprooted and I read Uprooted early 2018 and I really liked it. It was really dark and twisted and so I think this one will be very similar as well. It's basically about this girl who can turn silver to gold and that causes some problems as you can probably guess but um, I didn't want to know too much about this one. That's kind of a common theme here <laughs> with this book um, but it kind of causes some problems and I think this one will be really good as well. I hope it'll be dark and twisted like Uprooted would. Um, but I think, like, I think this one will be really, really interesting, and I've heard great things about this, actually. Some people say they like this better than Uprooted, so we'll see how I think, but I definitely will be reading this one soon. And finally, these last three books actually just cover series that I want to marathon through by the end of 2019. So they're all crime series, and I find with crime books I can read through them very quickly, so I don't think... Um, it will be too much of a challenge to kind of marathon through these. So the first one I have is the Inspector Gamache series by Louise Penny. This is the second book of Fatal Grace. So it basically follows this inspector named Inspector Gamache, obviously, who is a detective up in Montreal and just kind of takes place from there. And I read the first one, Still Life in 2017 I want to say and I really enjoyed it I just haven't had a chance to pick up the other books in the series but what I really like about it is that it takes place in a town called Three Pines which is kind of like a Stars Hollow so if you like that feeling of Stars Hollow and that like small town feel I think you'd really like this series and if you're Canadian too there's some timbits in here that some Canadians would get about Canadian culture so it's nice it reminds me of home as well but I've heard really great things about this series I really enjoyed Still Life so I have high expectations for this one. Next I have Her Final Breath by Robert Dagoni and this is the Tracy Crosswhite series and I read her um, My Sister's Grave which was the first one in the summer and I really enjoyed it so this is another one. I think there's only six books out so I don't have that. It won't take me too long to be caught up with the series but it follows a detective named Tracy who's out in Seattle and um, 
Basically her background is that her sister was abducted and they never found her body until like 20 years later. So she, because of that, she ended up becoming a homicide detective and that kind of takes place from there. So um, I really enjoyed this series. It, like I said, I am a sucker for like any of the crime novels. So obviously this one I will be marathoning through this year. And finally, this is another series that only has six or seven books out, so it shouldn't be too hard to get them all done by the end of the year. And it is the Erica Foster series by Robert Brizenda, and this basically follows a detective from in London who is a homicide detective and just all the ups and downs. I really like The Girl in the Ice. I read that back in February, I want to say, of 2017, and that one was really intense. Again, with these two... Um, series they do take place they're a bit more modern as opposed to like the Rizzolian Isles or Temperance Manor or Kate Scarpetta series they're a little bit dated because they do start their first books came out during the 90s so they're a little dated these ones are a little bit more modern so um, that adds a new little twist to it but yeah I really am excited for these two series I like flew through the girl in the ice um, so I have a feeling I'll just fly through these two series as well. So that's it guys. Thank you guys so much for watching. Let me know in the comments below what books you are excited to read in 2019. And so yeah, thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to give this video a thumbs up and I will see you guys next time. Bye guys!